Adam, we want to thank you, great and wonderful God, powerful God. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for this grace that you are giving to us this morning in order to empower us for what you have for us. Thank you, Jesus. May your name be glorified. But I am praying for every spirit of distraction to be banned in the mind and in the house of every single person connected to this message of Rano. And I'm banning Rano as well every spirit of misunderstanding in the name of Jesus. I release the teaching spirit. I release the light of God to enter the mind and the heart of everyone to take everyone closer again to you and to the objective you have upon their life. Thank you, Jesus. May your name be glorified. Amen. Hallelujah. So I'll say, God bless you all. Amen. Uh, I believe it's a great grace for us uh, to have uh, somebody like Jesus who loves us and die upon the cross for us. It is something we need to be praising him for and thanking him for every day or everywhere we, uh, yeah, everywhere we are. Amen. So today the title of our message is Live to be counted among the overcomers. Live in order to be counted among the overcomers or among his overcomers. Because somebody may say rather than, yeah, I am an overcomer. I'm successful. But God will look at you and say, you are not successful. Alia. So live to be counted among his overcomers. Amen. So church of God, Amen. The church of God is a place where God brings his children to be empowered with his principle and instruction, enable them to live in dominion on earth. But it's sad that up to now, the church is not, in, is not dominating on earth. But I believe very soon where it's going to be a, a reality. Amen. So this morning, the Lord wants you to be empowered to be counted among those who dominate on earth. Hallelujah. The uh, illustration I would take is like, uh, I would take, we are in UK, I would take UK, is a country where a system is in place. When you are born, whether you are born in this country or you come to this country, at some point, you need to know the system, fit in the system to the point that in, the, uh, in this system, you, you fit yourself to the point that you take a position where you are counted among those who are the star to look upon to or those who are successful in this system. So the kingdom of God as well is like that. So there is a system that is put in place, and that system has been finished, okay? has been finished, accomplished, while the, when Jesus died upon the cross for us. But, but now it's up to us, Christians, to learn this system, to know how it works, to know how to align with it. And when you know how to align with it, so you will be pumping what the resources the resources that is power that is intelligence that is cleverness that superpower amen to to overcome in all the different different systems we have on earth Alia? like i gave the example of uk runner we have this we have the system of uk france america everywhere africa everywhere amen jamaica everywhere we have every system but the system of the kingdom is more powerful than any other system. And God wants us, every system we are in, to use the kids, the system, his kids system, the system of his kingdom, hallelujah, the power of his kingdom, the wisdom, the wisdom of his kingdom, the love of his, everything that is of his kingdom to overcome here. Hallelujah. This is what church is about, to empower people. But the sad thing is that, Church people are the only people or the majority of the people who goes to school. They learn whatever they want to learn. When they are taught, they come home. 
they are in life, they never apply it, or they go to the doctors and the doctor gives them the medicine, they come home and they refuse to take the medicine. Hallelujah. So let's go. Joshua 1. 7 to 8. He said, be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. Do not deviate from them, turning either to the right or to the left. Then you will be successful in everything you do. In everything you do. So when you get into this system of God, the instructions of God, you will be successful in anything you do. Study this book of instruction continually, continually, so they can be in your mind. Meditate on it day and night, so you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then you will prosper and succeed in all you do. Earlier, whether you are a doctor, you are a lawyer, you are a carpenter, you are a hairdresser, whatever it, it is you are doing on this earth, if you can learn this system of the kingdom, you can abide in this system of the kingdom, receiving his instruction, connected, connect, connecting yourself to him. So I, you know, on your feeling, you will be directing you what to do, and you are doing it. There's no way you will not be part of the overcomers. Earlier, but now Deuteronomy 28, verse 1 to 6. It says, if you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully keep all his instructions that I am giving you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the world. I'm reading again. He said what? If you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully keep all his command that I am giving to you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nation of the world. Hallelujah. I want somebody to say where you are right now. Even if you don't admit your, your system, amen, said it for heaven to record it. Hallelujah, for heaven to record it. I am an overcomer and I will overcome and be overcomer where I am. Okay, okay, me, Kenneth, I am an overcomer, amen? I will overcome in every system God fit me into. Amen? Verse 2 say, you will experience all this blessing if you obey the law of God. Your town and your fields will be blessed. Your children, talking about your economy, every, your, your children and your crops will be blessed. Your offspring, the offspring of your head and the fox will be blessed. Your fruits, basket, and bread uh, broad will be blessed. Whenever and wherever you go and whatever you do, you will be blessed. Wonderful. And this is true. But why, but now in our days, Christians are lacking or are lacking all these blessings. Amen. We are lacking all these blessings we are with because they refuse or we refuse to follow the instructions of God. Hallelujah. But now, why we refuse to follow the instructions of God? Because some of the instructions of God are not pleasant. So God sent his only son to come and die upon the cross. Amen. To show us that regardless of the level of unpleasant, the level of discomfort, okay, that the instruction will give us is always pay. It will, it will pay. Because there's nothing God will instruct us to do today. Fasting, Prayer, what? That will be more painful than what Jesus suffered. Hallelujah. Psalm 119. It says, verse 89 to 91. He said, forever, oh Lord, your word is certain in heaven. Your word is certain. Your, faithful, your faithfulness endure to all generations. You establish the earth and its, aid, and its habit. And it ab yeah, abides. They continue this day. Amen. They continue this day according to your ordinances for all are your servants. 
and you have all are your servant. So to say what? That uh, whatever God says, he's faithful to every generation. But now God has a, a path to play. We have a part to play. There's no way we can play our part and God will not play his part. Even though when we are not playing our part, he is playing his part. But as we are not spiritual, we have not killed our flesh, we cannot hear him. Or when he, even if he's playing his part, giving us instruction, we are throwing the instruction away until our time is over and we have to go unsuccessful. Amen. So, brothers and sisters, because of our sins, God sent Jesus to come and die upon the cross for uh, upon the cross for us. Amen. That all of, because, uh, for all who believe in Him to fit back into the system of the kingdom or the economy of the kingdom with the power and the intelligence to dominate on this earth. But we refuse to be His true imitator. His true imitator. So, brothers and sisters, it's a time to take a decision to say, I want to imitate Christ. As, as my, the more you imitate Christ, the more you'll be successful. Hallelujah. Luke 12, 15. He said, I have a terrible baptism to, of suffering ahead of me. I have a terrible baptism, amen, of suffering. When you say baptism, it means immerse. I am going to be in, embedded into a terrible suffering. Amen. And I am under a heavy burden until it is accomplished. So there is, and you will have this burden to do this for God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, give me that grace. Give me that grace. Give me that grace. That grace to have the burden to do anything for you. Anything. I say, I mean it. Anything for you. For your glory, for your glory, and for the goodness of human beings. And or, or the goodness of your creation. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. The imitator of Christ submit to God in every single thing. Amen. He has done everything for us. All that remains is our own dedicated life to his kingdom, for his kingdom to be, uh, to his kingdom, for us to become partaker of the dominion. Amen. For us to become partakers of the dominion. Jesus came to establish a system that will dominate any other system on earth. He has given us the key of the kingdom. And he keep on giving us the key. And yeah, so sometimes, some little, okay, I want to share something with you. I want to share something with you. Okay, I want to share something with you. Uh, do you know that God can speak with you, human being? Amen? Okay. God can speak with you. We, we agree. Eh? God will be his kingdom then, okay? Speaking to somebody anywhere on this earth. Amen? Do you know that there is a grace? <laughs> there is a grace. Not just God open your eyes to see the person. Amen? But God connects himself with you and you are speaking with the person. So whatever God is speaking with the person, you are the third party or the third person listening to the whole con 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 conversation. So if you have that grace, do you think you can be in business or in anything and you will not be successful? Amen? You will not be successful? Even if we are in the country, if a decision is about to be taken in the palace or in the uh, government or wherever, as God knows, God can share the, his, what God, his nature with you. Or yes, his nature, yeah, his nature with you. And you can hear all those things. And you even know who is who. Hallelujah. So, brothers and sisters, it's important that we understand what we are talking about today. Amen. Matthew 16, verse 19 to 20. He said, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bind in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth will be lost in heaven. So that means you are in dominion. Get the key. Use them. Amen. Then he commanded his disciples that they should tell no one that he is what. He was the Jesus 
the Christ or the, I mean the Messiah or the anointed. So he's saying what? So God will give you power. God will give you everything, but you don't brag about it. You don't say anything to everyone, anybody, but you are dominating. That's why he say, yes, I am the Messiah, but don't tell anybody. Let me finish and go. But those who recognize me as a Messiah, I mean, they will be convinced by the Holy Spirit, by the Spirit of God, by God Himself, and God will bring them. Even though some people will come to Him because of different, different advantages, and they will come and promote His life for nothing. Amen. So, what do you perceive God doing with you in this life? Or what have you heard or have you seen God? in a vision or in a dream promising that you want to do with you, through you, or for you. All this, know that my God is faithful. He really wants to do it. If you can take his assertion, if you can submit to him, if you can come back to him, let me tell you this. Don't worry, I mean, don't worry. If what God says, nobody has done it on earth before. His name is God, I mean, Don't worry, if what God says he want to do with you, you have never had anybody done it before. Don't worry, if what God has done with you, the obstacle that you can see around you are so terrible, are so thick, are so high, to the point that you don't even know how you're gonna overcome it. Remember Jericho. Remember Jericho, a wall that was four meters high, two meters deep. Amen? Two meters deep. Amen? That means the top of the wall from is two meters. Amen? Amen? High, four meters. That wall came down without dynamic, without what? Bump, without anything. Hallelujah. So, my God is the most high, the almighty. Your God is the most high, the almighty. So believe in him. Amen. So, your whatever God, whatever God has promised you, they can start coming into manifestation from this year. If you can start your consistent dedication to him <coughs> from this year. <coughs> Sorry. I mean, dedication. But now, dedication allows us to overcome the battle the enemy put up in our soul, in our mind. There is a battle. I want to tell you, say a little bit about the battle. There are some of us. You plan to do something. You feel weary, tired, lazy not to do it. It's a battle that is in your soul. What you want to do is good, is right, is powerful, is want to, is even godly, is even an instruction God has given you. But there's a battle the enemy puts up in your soul for you not to do it. So, they are in your mind. Some, you even receive it. But when the appointed time comes, you just forget it. Amen? At the right time, you, just, you, you have forgotten it. That is the battle the enemy has put up in your mind. So the soul is the battlefield. Some people say the mind, but not just the mind, it's the soul, the whole soul, because the mind is the center of the soul. This is the battlefield. But now the dedication, amen, allow us to overcome the battle in our soul. Amen. That's why first, second Timothy, second Timothy two, uh, second Timothy one seven says, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but the power and love uh, of a sound mind, New King James, of a sound mind. A sound mind is a mind that is clean, a mind that is clear, that 
is in control of everything he wants to do. Amen. But now when I go to NLT, say, for God has not given us a spirit of fear or timidity. I can add of laziness. Amen. But of love, of power, but of power, love, and self discipline. When we are talking about self discipline, you don't need somebody to be telling you you need to fast. You know, so some of us right now, if so, nobody tell you, it's like children. If the parent did not tell you, go and study, they won't study. Their mind are played. Amen. Are attracted by things that are not the most important things in life. So the parents need to be uh, there. The teachers need to be there to channel them, to guide them until they become mature. Amen. And the same thing is happening in Christianity. Amen. Who? Cool. So God, what God wants us to do is to see what is the target. The target is what he's shown you in your dream, what he prophesies about you, what he tells you, what you know. That is your destiny. That is where you are going. And you are making a plan how to achieve it, how to see it happen. Amen. He said, God, for God has not given us a spirit of fear or timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. So never be ashamed to tell others about our Lord. And don't be ashamed of me either, even though I am in prison for him. Even though I am in prison for him with the strength, of, with the strength God gives you, be ready to suffer with me for the sake of the good news. For God saved us and called us to live a holy life. He did this not because we deserve it, but because that was the plan from before the beginning of the time to show us his grace through Christ Jesus. So the plan is this. Amen. For we should carry that spirit of power, love, and self-discipline to overcome, to be uh, to be counted among the overcomers. Amen. Christian of our days, we need to wake up. Hallelujah. We need to wake up because the time of playing, of distractions, is over. And I want to read it to you. And you get it here. Jesus is saying this, okay? When he appeared to rejoin as more, as uh, what do you call it, as uh, as wisdom. So well, he appeared as wisdom because this is the wisdom we need. Amen. We need some years ago before even we reach 2022. He said, "You will be." A, this is in the call, chapter two, verse fifty-four. In other words, page fifty-three to fifty-four. I'm reading it, eh? Okay, he said, hmm. you will be given mercy because you have asked for it. I will give you more time. My mercy to you is time. Use this time wisely, for soon there will be no more. Okay, I'm reading it again. You will be given mercy because you have asked for it. I will give you more time. My message to you is time. Use this time wisely. For soon, there will be no more. And that soon has come. And there's no more time. So when somebody is preaching to you, grace, 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 grace. At this time, grace, preaching grace to you, okay? The first grace to you is deception. I'll continue. The time is near when I will come up, when I can delay no more. I mean, the time is near where I can delay no more. Every day that I delay, my judgment is mercy. See it as that, see it as that and use it wisely. I would always rather show mercy than judgment, but the end is near. Darkness is growing, and the time of great trouble will be upon you soon. 
If you do not use the time I give you, the coming trouble will overtake you. Amen. The darkness is growing and the time of great troubles will be soon upon you. If you do not use the time I give you, the coming troubles will overtake you. If you use the time that I give you wisely, you will overcome and prevail. There is one characteristic that is common to all uh, to the overcomers in every age. They do not waste their time. How? Because they are living a consecrated life, like Daniel used to. They pray every day. They fast regularly. They study the Bible. They live by the instructions of God. This make them feel, uh, allow them to be fed by the Spirit. So when the Spirit fills their soul, the presence of the Spirit is is in dominion in their soul. So the battle that the enemy put up in their soul, that battle is won. Then anything the Spirit is communicating to their soul, they are up doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it until they become overcomers. So in my mercy, I am giving you this warning. Warn my people that in my mercy, I will no no longer let them presume on my mercy. In my mercy, my discipline will be upon them. My what? Discipline will be upon them. Warn them not to harden their hearts, but to repent and turn to me. To do what? Repent and turn to me. That means focus on God like Daniel used to. And God taught us that somebody like Daniel was in Babylon. He overcame. And even in that system of Babylon, nobody can do without it, who have done without him. Amen? Uh, Egypt was the system of the world. Uh, uh, Joseph overcame. Amen. And in that system, Joseph, as he put himself up with the spirit of uh, with the spirit of God, Amen. He overcame, and nobody could have done without uh, without Joseph in that system. So, brothers and sisters, I'm telling you, it's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Alia, he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The only thing is, is to pay the price and to become a dedicated people. It is true that you too can fall away. Your love will grow cold and you will de- deny me if you do not deny yourself. Deny yourself and take up your cross day every day. Those who seek to save their own life will lose it, and but those who lose their life for my sake will find true life. What I am, I will give to my people will be life of even more abundance than they have asked for, even in their presumption. When I have finished jump, judging my own household, I will. Amen. I will then send my judgment upon the whole earth. In my righteous judgment, I will show the distinction between my people and those who do not know me. Now, the whole world lies in the power of the evil one. Now, the he reward the evil one, eh? reward and righteousness and resist the righteousness. When the judgment day comes, the whole world will know that I reward righteousness and resist the proud. Alivia, isn't it wonderful? Okay, let me give the testimony clearly. This testimony is what? Is a grace. I could not, I could have not even believe or uh, imagine that those things exist. Amen. That's you are here. You are talking to people. Amen. You are talking with people who are miles away, who are in other country, other continent. Amen. You are talking to them, con- conversing with them. Whatever they are planning, whatever they want to do, how they want to do it, everything you ask them, because they tell you everything.
Amen. That is a grace to overcome. Amen. Let's look at how he delivered his promise through the dedicated life of Daniel. Amen. Because most of the time, some people say, oh, you pray. But you can pray. Something can, can be the will of God. But still, there's a battle in your soul and the battle in the world. So when they say that, that what God said, overcomers, that means God wants you to go to overcome the battle that is in your soul and your mind and the battle that is around you in the world. Then you can overcome. And everybody will see that you are of God. Amen. So Daniel 9, verse 2 to 3, it said, during the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, learned from the reading of the word of the Lord as I revealed to Jeremiah the prophet that Jerusalem might, must lie desolate for 70 years. So I turned to the Lord God and plead with him in prayer and fasting. I also wore rough ball up and sprinkling myself with ashes, okay? So what this is telling us, is not because God promised something in the Bible to all the Christians, or even what we are reading now, that's why you're gonna have it. Unless you do what he asked everyone to do, some people will have it, you will not have it, amen? So Daniel 9, look at what Daniel 9. Uh, Daniel 9, verse 20 to 23, he said, I went on praying, and confessing my sin, and confessing my sin and the sin of my people, pleading with the Lord, my God, for Jerusalem, amen, his holy mountain, amen. As I was praying, Gabriel, whom I had seen in the earlier vision, came swiftly to meet me at the time of the evening sacrifice. Daniel 10, 12 to 14. Then he said, don't be afraid, Daniel. Since the first day you began to pray for understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your request has been heard in heaven. I have come to answer to your prayer. But for 21 days, the spirit prince of the kingdom of Persia blocked my way. Then Michael, one of the archangels came to help me. And I left him there with the prince, the spirit prince of the kingdom of Persia. Now I am going, I now I am here to explain what will happen to your people in the future for this vision concern a time yet to come, which is our time now. Amen. So you see. He said everything is settled, but God cannot go against his word. He said he has given a dominion, authority and dominion, Genesis 1, 22, uh, 27, amen, to, the, uh, to mankind. But now Gabriel was arrested, blocked by a principality. But angel, Elkin Gabriel, the prayer of human being on earth, amen, has released him. Because he continued, he persevered in prayer, so he has been released. God now has to send Michael to go and free him. Because Daniel was persevering. So, brothers and sisters, will you start persevering? That's what we said, a consecrated life. When you are consecrated, so every day you are praying till you reach your next step. You continue praying, fasting, fasting, dedicating yourself till you reach the following step, till you reach your destiny and you finish and go. Look at how Jesus finished everything in 33 years and he's gone. Focus, dedication. Amen. But now we don't have time. I'm telling you, this is the most terrible. Seven years, the world have never experienced that is starting in this 2022. But the most wonderful and marvelous seven years that the church have never experienced. But when I'm saying the church, it does not mean that it's not because you are speaking in tongues. 
is those who are aligned to God. What we read now, those who be applying them. That's why you have this grace this morning to be counted among the overcomers. Amen. People who will be wherever they are, but do in your domain, people cannot do without you. Like the way people in Babylon, they could have not done without Daniel. In Egypt, they could have not done without who? Joseph. Are So let's look at how, how the same thing happened to what? Elijah, this, the man of what? Power. Elijah, first king, 18. 41 to 44. Then Elijah said to Ahab, go, get something to eat and drink. For I heard a mighty rainstorm coming. So with the spiritual ear, you could have heard, amen, the, the rain coming. Then you know that, oh, the time is, uh, but nobody heard it, but you could have heard it. Amen. So 42. So Ahab went to eat and drink, but Elijah climbed to the top of the mountain Carmel and bow low to the ground and pray with his face between his legs. Then he said to his servant, go and look out toward the sea. The servant went and looked, turned, re then returned to Elijah and said, I didn't see anything. Seven times Elijah told him to go and look. This seven times we are talking about something. Well, one time is one hour prayer. Because people in Israel, they, 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 they observe the, the, the clock, amen, the watch to pray. One hour prayer. So this seven, after seven hours, seven distinctive hours of prayer, amen. What is it? And look, and 44, finally the seventh time, his servant told him, I saw a little cloud about the side of a hands, a, a man's hand, rising from the sea. Alia. So you see the system, how uh, uh, the sea, uh, the, 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 the river are uh, evaporated and goes back. So when he prayed for three and a half years, even though the sun is, was coming down on earth, there was no evaporation for rain to come. Now the evaporation is good. So even the cloud, instead of evaporator going to heaven, so the cloud even is forming. So it is what, what was it? Accelerated process. Amen. So what? I saw a little cloud about the size of what a man's hand risen from the sea. Then Elijah shouted, hurry to Ahab and tell him, climb into the chariot and go back home. If you don't hurry, the rain will stop you. Alia, so we can see. Amen. So, did he, so Elijah was dedicated already with his life of fasting. Then I was telling you that when Elijah went to the, uh, the widow of Sareta, Alia, so I don't believe he was, they were eating two times a day, so once a day. So for the whole three and a half years, I believe Elijah was fasting for three and a half years. Because at the beginning, when he declared this, he, 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 he was not that close to God in order to call the fire to come. So dedication, that's why God will allow some Allow, allow the church to go into tribulation. So those who hear those this kind of teachings, so at that time when they are in the hidden place, so they will put up prayer, 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 prayer. What we are asking them now to do, they are not doing. They will be doing, 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 doing. Then they will reach level. Then at uh, well, that time they will be praying, they will not be shouting, no? and they will be praying, amen? They will not be shouting. But as they are praying, 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 so when the time comes, they will be ready. When they come out, the zeal, the power, the anointing, everything will feed them so they can come out and fight and take back the whole world for God. But those who start it with wisdom, in wisdom, now, they will not need to hide in those times. And nobody can do anything against them. And I believe we are one of them. We are one of us. Amen. Let's go. God, that's what he said. 
However, the second heaven and the agent are fighting the will of God upon our life. We need to be aware of that. Until we know our divine rights and stand. When I say a divine right, we need to know it. How do you get it? We get it through the preaching. We get it through the study of the Bible. Our divine rights, as we know our divine right, and stand on them to fight back with consistently. We will always be victim of the bully witches and demons. They are bullies. Amen. So repent from all your sin and wrongdoing. Study your Bible constantly to more, to know more about God and yourself. Amen. Live to fit in the kingdom system. That is the only system that can empower you to dominate, regardless of the system you are living in or in this on this earth. Then use your authority to conquer all that God has promised upon your life. We must get our heaven open to live in dominion on earth. Discipline yourself in knowledge of God. I mean, studying the Bible, reading the books, hallelujah. Praying, prayer, and fasting. You need to discipline yourself in that. And you must trust God for whatever he said upon your life. Whether it has been done before or not, God said it, it will happen if you can listen to his instruction, obey and commit yourself to him. Amen. So I'll say God bless you and let me pray for you. Father, I just want to thank you for the life of all my brothers and sisters that are connected and listening to this message now. Father, I'm praying, let your anointing reach them. Let your power reach them. Let your light fill their mind to take away all that the enemy have planted to steal great, great information away. Lord, I want to thank you because you are great God. You are faithful God. You are wonderful God. You are powerful God. King of kings, I want to thank you. I want to bless your name. Father, give everyone what everyone needs in order to be counted among the overcomers. May your name be glorified. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm.